There are a bajillion different ways to represent numbers, but the most flexible, useful, and common way is called positional notation. Let's choose a random number for demonstration. How about 420.69? Positional notation is talking about digits. There are five digits here, we know what they are, and the position of the digit tells us the magnitude of that digit. And the reason this is incredible is because it allows us to visually do math. The things we do with numbers, what do we do with them? We count. We compare numbers, which one's bigger or smaller. We compare magnitude. This one is 10 times bigger, 100 times bigger. We work with percentages and just move the decimal point around. Don't even change the digits, just move the decimal point and we can see percentages. We add, subtract, we multiply, we divide. And all of this stuff is made so much easier by this notation. Basically, we can do algebra without having to do algebra because we're doing algebra visually. This is called decimal. It's referring to base 10 because we have 10 digits. Did you know fingers and toes are called digits? Well, isn't that interesting? But more on what a base is in a minute. Just know that this is base 10 and we call it decimal. That's why that's called the decimal point. I'll briefly mention negatives. Negative just means opposite. It means reverse. It means take away. It means absence. It just means we're doing the other thing than normal. Negatives aren't part of this notation. It doesn't matter. Adding and subtracting is just going in opposite directions. So we don't even need to worry about negatives. If we have a number and subtract another one, we can negate it and add it. We can, yeah, you get it. The negative is not part of the number. So what was this base I mentioned? Base 10, decimal. Hexadecimal is base 16. Binary is base 2. Octal is base 8. This is 4 times 10 to the 2 plus 2 times 10 to the 1 plus 0 times 10 to the 0 plus 6 times 10 to the minus 1 plus 9 times 10 to the minus 2. This is digit number 2, 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2. Or perhaps position is better than number. If you're a programmer, you would say index. This is the integral part as an in integer. The zero digit, the basic place, the core place, is our counting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then the fractional part is how much of 1 we have left over. And this is where the decimal point, of course, comes in because you move the decimal point over two places, we have 69% of one more piece. But that's positional notation. 10 is your base. This is your digit position. And this is your digit value. And now you can see how this can get cumbersome. And of course, we could get rid of the one with zero. But in the position, in the physical position, as we look at the number, is all of this encoded. And when we add, we're doing algebra, or arithmetic at least, with these polynomials without actually having to write any of it out. What is a digit? Well, it's just how many. Remember that a number is an abstract concept. If we have five, we can write five this way, we can write five this way, we can write five this way. This is all the same thing, it's just how we write it. So the base is how many digits? So we write zero through nine. These are our digits. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What if we need more digits? What if we need base 16 instead of 10? We need six more digits. Well, it could be anything. You could write, you know, like 10, 11, 12. You could write it sideways or whatever you want. That's a little confusing. And also, people were writing hexadecimal long before there was fancy typography. So we just came up with A, B, C, D, E, F. A is 10. F is 15. It just represents the number 15. So you could have 420.69F if this was hexadecimal, and it would be the same thing as before, except now we're in base 16. We're in base 16. So it'd be 4 times 16 to the 2, plus 2 times 16 to the 1, plus 0 times 16 to the 0, plus 6 times 16 to the minus 1, plus 9 times 16 to the minus 2, plus 15 times times 16 to the minus 3. So it's the same thing. We're just using positional notation to do all this, to write out all of this nonsense in a way that's very easy to manipulate. And all your stuff, you learn longhand addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, it works fine in any base. Your base too. You know, 11001001. Base 2 is binary. You've only got two digits, 0 and 1. All of it works the same. The same thing where you've got, you know, 
12 plus 24, and you go 6 and 3 is 36. Well, it works the same way with hexadecimal. Let's say you've got, you know, A1 plus 2B. Well, A is 10, B is 11, so we've got 11 plus 1 is 12, is C. We've got 10 plus 2 is 12, so that's also C. So A1 plus 2B is CC. It's the same thing because of positional notation that encodes the base, the digit position, and the digit value visually. So what are the possible bases? A base is how many digits there are. So can there be base one? There's only one digit. Well, one digit would be zero, so we can write zero. Oh well. But then you say, well, what about one? Instead, make your digit one. So you'd have one and two and three. This is called hash marks. And we can even do like four and then five. How do we write zero? Blank? We could. But also, this would get really annoying. This would get extremely annoying. So base one makes no sense. Zero? Zero digits? No. Base 2.4. What is a four tenths of a digit? No. A base is an integer. Two or greater. Base 2, base 3, base 4, base 5. Any base. You can have base 875,042 if you want. One thing I do, I have conceptualized something called big nums. Well, big nums already existed. But the way I do big nums that I've conceptualized is base 256. We'll get into that another day. If you like your fancy math notation, let's say that you have digits. Digit D. So we have, you know, this is D2 equals 4, D of minus 1 equals 6, that kind of thing. Let's say I is your index. So I here equals 2, I here equals negative 1, I is your index, and B is your base. B, in this case, equals 16, because hexadecimal. The sum over all I, we'll say little i, of digit I times base to the power of I. So if I is 2, then D2 is 4, times 16 is the base, and I is 2. That's that digit. If I is negative 1, we've got D negative 1 is 6, times 16 is the base, to negative 1 is I. This notation just means sum in math. So it's a more compact way. We can write the number this way. Do you need to know that? No, only if you do math. But to understand this, you don't. I just wanted to mention it. So you know, I know. Let's go back to base 10. Our lovely random number, chosen with no meaning whatsoever. What does this mean? It's the same thing. Add another one, add some more, some more, some more, some more, some more, some more. All the zeros we want, as long as we want. Why does this work? The same thing. This is you know, digit 0, 1, 2, 3. This is minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. So we've got 0 times 10 to the 3. We've got 0 times 10 to the minus 3. 0 times anything is 0. So it doesn't matter how many digits we add. Algebraically, we're not adding anything. So they're nice for placeholders. We use it to format numbers. So they're prettier to look at, to line them up. Or if we're doing the multiplication and such, we use it as a spacer to remind ourselves what we're doing. And of course, if you kept moving this decimal point, you could move it through those zeros that we just don't write. But that's why we can have infinite zeros. So there's really only one more thing to mention in this introductory video. How do we write 1 over 3? 1 third. 0 0.333333, repeating of course. And you can go on literally forever. You will never be able to write all the threes, which is one reason why we like to write it as one over three. But here's a fun thing. Let's get rid of that. So in base 10, base 10, one third is 0 0.333, repeating, of course. What about in base three? In base three, one third is 0 0.1. That's it. What's our positional notation? Three times 10 to the minus one, plus three times 10 to the minus two, plus three times 10 to the minus three, infinitely, trying to get closer and closer and closer to actually a third. But what is this? Base three, remember? So it's, you know, zero times three to the zero. This is the only real digit. We just write that so we don't have the dangling dot. It's one times three to the minus one, because this is the minus one digit, this is the zero digit, and the base is three. One times three to the minus one equals one times one over three equals one over three. In base three, you can represent one third exactly with a finite number of digits. In base 10, you cannot. That's a trick to bases. This is why you have the concept of rational numbers, irrational numbers, transcendental numbers. A rational number 
is one that can be represented in terms of, let's say, a over c. For two integers, any two integers, any number, if it has a finite number of digits in any base, you can represent it algebraically. And the reason for that is this. a times c to the negative 1 is the same thing, because this is a times 1 over c equals a times c to the negative 1. That's what we just did. If you have a is any integer, and c is any integer that's not 0, because you don't divide by 0, you can always have base c. If we operate in base c over here, that's what this is. This right here is O point A, whatever A is, right? Because then we get A times C to the negative 1. And since it's a base, right, because you can't say, if you, if you have base 8, you're not going to have 0 0.9 because there's only 8 digits, 0 through 7. So you can't have 0 0.9 in base 8. So C must be greater than A. But there's an infinite number of integers. You can always make C bigger as much as you need. Any number that can be represented A over C is a rational number, is a rational number. And you can write it in some base as 0 point a digit, and there it is. So for every single rational number, there is a base, at least one, and of course infinite, because you can always, you know, multiply c or whatever. But there's always at least one base in which you can write it with a finite number of digits. So for one-third, you can have it in base three. So that was the theoretical hypothetical fun episode. This is a five-part series. Oh, God. Yeah. This channel has different kinds of videos. Sometimes I do math, sometimes I do electronics, sometimes I do chemistry, sometimes I might do juggling, who knows? Video two will be about addition, subtraction, and multiplication. I'm going to show you the longhand version and show you why positional notation works. Video three is gonna be division, because division is trickier and doesn't work quite as nicely. But it does work, and I'll show you why. Video four is going to show you some divisibility tricks. How do you know a number is divisible by two, three, five, ten? Just by looking at it in positional notation. I'll show you. It's pretty neat. And the final video is going to be about how to convert between base from decimal, the numbers we use and calculators generally use, to hexadecimal for programming, to binary for hardware engineering, to octal for working in Unix. It'll be a fun series, but that's it for now, so I'll be seeing you.